This video is all about one of the most fundamental skills for you to master when you're doing your drawings, and that is to draw ellipses. We're going to learn all about them, and I promise there's no maths involved. Welcome back to my channel. If we have not met before, my name is Michelle, and on this channel, I use my many decades of experience teaching real life art classes to help you to paint in watercolors and learn accurate drawing. We also do a little bit of mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists too. If that's your sort of thing, please do consider subscribing. It's completely free. So ellipses are everywhere. They're on simple items like this reel of tape here. They're on car wheels. You'll find them in buildings with columns or even buildings themselves, such as lighthouses with that nice curve. You'll find them on plant pots and vases, even on your good old British mug of tea. Getting ellipses right is so, so important. Now, I promised you at the beginning that we won't be doing any maths, and that's because I spent most of my childhood math lessons drawing pictures of pop stars in the back of the book. So I am not the person to come to for maths and geometry, which means I'm going to be really good at explaining this in a way that you're going to find usable. is isn't going to be mind blowing, but is going to give you the basics that you need to know. Now, if you are a mathematician or you're into geometry or you're an architect, you might be inclined to sort of pick me up on some of the terms I use and say, well, you know, ellipse isn't the exact right word for this. As I said, I'm not a mathematician. I'm all about learning to draw in a really easy and basic way. So I promise you're going to understand this. So there's no need to come into the comments and pick me up on exact mathematical or geometric terms. It really doesn't matter. All that matters is that you understand what I'm talking about and that you learn to do this very essential skill. I've also recently had a few people picking me up on my pronunciation of the word drawing because I put an R in the middle. If you don't know, this is called an intrusive R. It's a natural part of certain languages and where I grew up in London is certainly the way we said things. And believe me, I have tried to say it the other way. I, sim I simply cannot say it any other way. It's just the way I speak. There's no need to get upset about the way that people speak. So without further ado, let's get on and learn all about ellipses and more importantly, how to draw them, how to understand them and how to make them work for you so that you can get the realism and the beautiful drawings that you require. Let's look first of all at what an ellipse actually is. There's a difference between an ellipse and an oval. An ellipse may appear to be an oval, but an oval is not an ellipse. So already it's getting a little bit confusing. So let me explain quite simply. I've got here the lid of a little pot that I keep some sewing things in. And this is a perfect circle. So if I face it towards you, it's a circle. But as I start to twist it, it becomes an ellipse. It can be flat like this or tilted like this. But you can see that it changes shape and it goes into that sort of oval shape. But if I turn it to face completely towards you, or if you're looking at it from above or below, it's going to be a perfect circle. So let me show you something that's an oval and not an ellipse. Here I have a soap dish from my bathroom. So this is an oval. It looks similar to an ellipse and, you know, we can change the way it looks a little bit, but it's never a full circle. If I face it directly towards you, it never becomes a full circle because it is just a fixed oval in shape. That's not to say that some of the techniques that we're going to use today couldn't be used to draw this because they could, but an ellipse is a circle that's seen at an angle so that it becomes a foreshortened in one direction and wider in another direction. It's all to do with eyeline. I'll explain that in a moment, but we've made a good start because now we know what an ellipse is. So let's start doing some actual drawing. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how to measure the size of your ellipse. And we're going to use axes. So we'll have a horizontal and a vertical axis. And the proportions between them are going to show us roughly how big our ellipse is. In other words, how wide it is compared to how deep. These axes can also be used to help us see if we are getting our ellipse symmetrical. Let me show you what I mean. One of the ways that we can measure an ellipse just in general terms of um, how to draw it is to look at the depth versus the width. And we can do this by placing a cross in it. I'll show you that in a moment. You can see that these ones here are not very deep at all, but they are quite wide. Now, if you're using a photograph like this, you can literally, you know, use the tip of your pencil and measure like this and perhaps see how many times this goes in. 
we've got a deeper ellipse here. This looks very circular, but it can't be a full circle, otherwise it would be tipped completely towards us. So we can use this to measure. We can measure height versus width. And here we see it's a little bit wider than it is high, which is to be expected. Now this measurement method only goes so far because when it comes to real life ellipses, sometimes you can't see the other side because the object isn't transparent or you're not looking at it from above. We can, of course, imagine where the rest of the ellipse would go. And that's quite effective in sort of fixing it in our brains. What we're looking at is height versus width. We can actually find a rough center point. I drew this ellipse earlier just by eye with no reference material. It won't be perfect, but it's not bad. I'm going to show you how to draw a smooth ellipse like this in a moment. But first of all, let's take a cross through it and we'll divide it the other way too. I'm using a set square or a right angle here against the sides of my paper so that I know the ellipse is level. So here I've got a vertical axis and I've got a horizontal axis. Now we could tip or rotate this axis. That's less common. I'll talk more about that in a moment. But first of all, we're just looking at this as a way of measuring. Now, some people actually measure their ellipse and, you know, think, well, it's this high, it's this wide, and they draw themselves a little cross on the paper before drawing their ellipse and they draw their ellipse round the cross. Now, that's certainly a method that works. I myself don't use it simply because you need to draw smoothly to draw a good ellipse and it's really quite hard to draw within exact parameters like that. But there's nothing wrong with that method if it helps you. Now, what I like to do is draw my ellipse first and then we can place a cross over the top. And what this does is it helps me to see if my ellipse is symmetrical. And we can see here straight away that uh, it's a bit more on this side than this side. So I can choose then. What I can do is I can choose one side that I think looks right. And I can then use that to adjust a little bit and get my ellipse more symmetrical. If you have a tendency to draw an ellipse and you know it's, it's really all over the place, then putting across roughly through the center points like this is going to help you to even that out and get it neatly. But how do we actually get a smooth line like this? We'll talk about that next. So one of the ways that you can really improve the drawing of your ellipses is to like this video. Don't forget to click that thumbs up. I'd love to get to a thousand likes on this video. You can do it in less than a second. It's completely free. So let's get back to our drawing tutorial. So let's look at actually how to draw our ellipse smoothly, because as you can see, no matter how steep or shallow the angle of the circle is, it never has any corners. And this is a big mistake that people make when drawing ellipses. One of the best ways to do it is to draw from the shoulder or even from the elbow, but not using the hand at all. I'll put up some uh, footage of me drawing like this so you can briefly see how it works. And now we'll point the camera downwards and I'll show you what it looks like up close. I showed you how I was drawing smoothly from the shoulder. I'll show you how that looks in a moment. But here's what beginners often do when they try to draw an ellipse. They'll dot the line because they're not confident of keeping a smooth line. That's very hard to do, isn't it? So what they'll do is they'll go around the top and they'll go around the bottom like this. Now what happens then is we end up with this sort of shape. It's almost like an eye and it has these corners. Now, obviously, something circular can't have corners. I'm going to talk more about corners in a moment. First of all, let me show you how I draw. And what I'll do is I'll just use a smooth movement like this. You see that you end up with multiple lines. So what you can do then is once you've got a few lines, you can pick the part that you think looks the best. And we're going to take the pencil round, go a little bit darker, and I'm just going to choose the bit that I think looks the best. And then I can erase the part I don't need, the lines I don't need, and just tidy it up a bit. And you always want to make sure that there's no corner of the edges here. Now, sometimes we'll be drawing this ellipse within an outside parameter, 
like the side of a pot or a vase. As I said, if it helps you, you can put that cross shape in or you can just do what I do and draw it freehand. Even if, you know, it's fairly messy, you'll eventually get something that looks quite smooth. It's going to look much more realistic than this one here, which not only is not symmetrical, but it has corners and that is impossible with an ellipse, which is simply a circle seen from a different viewpoint. Now we've learned that ellipses don't have corners that you need to draw them smoothly and when people are drawing a full ellipse you know where you can see the whole of the ellipse then this is fairly simple to do it's just a matter of sort of improving your manual dexterity and a bit of practice but there is a time when even when people get this right they get this wrong when they can only see part of the ellipse so an example would be when you can see perhaps the bottom of a vase but you can't see the back of the ellipse so you can just see the front curve or something where there's perhaps a stripe or decoration running around something, a rim, for example, or a stripe on a vase, or one of those bigger stripes around a lighthouse, or any kind of rim around a pot. This is where people get this wrong, and they start to put a sharp edge on the end of their ellipse, and they don't even realize they're doing it. Let's look at how to fix that now. This tiny, tiny fix is going to make your drawings so much more realistic. I've drawn a little vase or a pot. I'm going to show you in a moment how you would work out the ellipses on this because we have one here. We also have another one here that perhaps we can't see because the vase is opaque. But what I want to talk to you about first of all is corners and corners that we don't notice we're doing. So let's imagine there's a stripe around this vase. So I'm going to do the stripe going from one side to the other. Of course it's going to curve and follow the shape of the pot doesn't look too bad, does it? But here's the mistake. If you look here, we have almost a corner in this intersection here. Now we know this stripe goes all the way around the vase. It must in itself be an ellipse. But let's continue this line out and see where the angle of it takes us. And this one here. Well, that's not right, is it? Because that stripe needs to go round the vase. And yet look how shallow the angle is. Look how sharp of a corner we have here. What we actually need to do, and let's erase it and draw it again, is to ensure that this stripe is also an ellipse. So this time when I draw it, what I'm going to do is rather than just take it up and out here, I am going to continue to curve it round. So what you're aiming for here is for there almost to be no discernible area where it meets the edge, by which I mean there's no point where it stops. This line that comes down the side here could almost just continue around to become the ellipse, the stripe on the vase. And again, with this one here, and take it so it just imperceptibly curves like this, because if we could see the back of it, it is also an ellipse. The stripe continues all the way around the vase. So it's really important that you don't have hard edges here and that any decoration on the vase almost continues imperceptibly down. You'll notice as well, if this was a colored stripe running around the vase, that because of perspective, it's going to be deeper here than it is here. And that's just because this part, this center part of the vase is the area that's closest to us. So always make sure that you're intersecting lines like this. And it doesn't make any difference whether or not it's a vase or a tower on a castle. They must continue curving where they meet that sideline and not end in a hard edge. If you're not sure if you've got it right, just extend that sideline and see where it goes. It should be going around the back of the vase, not off into space. If you have trouble aligning the top and the base of your vase or any building, Putting up a center line like this can help to see if everything is symmetrical. So let's talk about tilted ellipses now. So when I showed you the example where we use the axis, one was vertical and one was horizontal. This is what you're going to come across 90% of the time because we stand things on the ground. Buildings grow up at right angles from the ground. Vases stand on flat tabletops and everything is nice and upright. But is there ever a time when the axis should be tipped? In other words, the ellipse is tipped on its side. Absolutely, yes, this can happen. 
So let me give you a few examples. You may actually have a vase or a tube of some kind that's been designed so it curves around. The end of a drain pipe might do this. So what it would look like is here's your ellipse and it's going to be tipped on the side like this. A few other places that you might find this. You might find this on an angle poise lamp, one of those lamps that has the bendy top so it can face in any direction. That could be a tilted ellipse. What about the cuff of my cardigan here? It's not exactly smooth, but we've got the same thing going on. It's tipped. So yes, there are ellipses with tipped axes, but I would say they're probably in less than 10% of the things that you need to draw. So you can just tilt the angle of the axis of your ellipses in order to work these out, but it's probably easier just to sketch them by eye. Remember that no matter how your ellipse is tilted, it's still going to be symmetrical and it's still not going to have any corners. We're going to talk about eyeline now and eyeline is really important because it's what makes an ellipse look like an ellipse. If you're struggling to understand this part of the video, find something that's circular but fairly flat. A drinks coaster would be ideal. I'm going to use this weight that I've got for sewing. I'm going to look at this. So if I hold it flat towards you, so you're looking at all of it, you can see it's a circle. But as I turn it on its side, especially if it's level with your eyes, it's going to appear more or less as a straight line. Now, if I was to place this above my head and look up at it, again, I'd see all of it. So it would be a full circle. If I dropped it on the floor and leant over and peered down at it, again, it would appear to be a full circle. So what this means is that as an ellipse approaches your eye line, it's going to become flatter and flatter. As it goes above your eye line, it becomes wider and wider or deeper and deeper. And the same happens as it goes below your eye line. So when you're drawing something that has some height to it, whether that's a tall building like a lighthouse, and we're going to do that exact example later because it's one that you often come across, or whether you're doing something like this, which has a bit of height to it, the ellipse at the top and the ellipse at the bottom are never going to be the same. And that's because they're both going to be at different distances from your eye line. It's starting to sound really complicated. So I'm going to draw you now a simple diagram to explain how it works. And you'll never get this wrong again. So I've started to draw a sort of a round vase here that sat on a table. Now, mostly when you're looking and here's our eye up here to indicate our person looking down. Mostly when you're looking at something that's on a table, you're likely to be higher than the object. So we're looking down at the top of this ellipse. So we can see slightly into this vase. When it comes to the bottom of the vase, we're looking further down at more of an angle. Now, as we found, the more we look down at something, the steeper the angle, the more curved the ellipse becomes. So even though our ellipse on the bottom, we can't perhaps see through the vase, or maybe it's a glass vase and we can see, but there would be another ellipse here. What this principle tells us is that we're looking down here, but we're looking further down here. So this ellipse must be deeper than the top ellipse. If we could see through the vase, the bottom ellipse is going to be deeper than the top ellipse. Now this is when we're looking down at this object. So what if it were up high, for instance, on a shelf? Now often when things are on something like shelves or standing on buildings, we can't actually see the base of them. And that's because gravity, you know, stops things from just floating in the air. So let's imagine our vase, I'll do it a little smaller up here, and it's now above our eye line. So the top will go up like this, and assuming this is not a see-through vase, let's get rid of this bit here. So it's now a ceramic pot. What we would see is a very deep ellipse here. And as it came closer to our eye line, a slightly less deep ellipse here. Now notice because it's above us now, we can actually see the underneath of the vase. So now the vase is above us. So this is above our eye line, and this is more above our eye line. 
However, unless you're drawing something like the basket on a hot air balloon, this is an unusual thing to see because stuff doesn't usually float up in the air. What we'd be more likely to see is that this vase was perhaps sitting on a shelf like this. So we wouldn't see any of this. And the bottom might appear to be flat, but it's not really, is it? It's just that our eye line is being blocked by the shelf on which the vase is sitting. Now, if any of these ellipses here were directly level with our eye line, they would appear to be completely straight. That's unusual. As I said, most often with objects like cups and vases, even plant pots, unless they're very large ones, they tend to be below our eye line. So it's important to remember that the ellipses get deeper as they go below our eye line, but conversely, they'll also get deeper as they go above our eye line. But of course, we can't always see through opaque objects. But that's how it works with objects like vases and pots. But what if we're looking at something much bigger, like a photograph of a lighthouse? Many of them have stripes or decorative features that go round. We could also be talking about columns or any circular building. Let me show you how it works and how to find where the eye line is if you're looking at a photograph. I've got a lighthouse here and often with lighthouses there are, we have some red and white ones near me, they're sort of striped. So we often have stripes or lines that are running around. So what we've learned so far is that the higher above the eye line, the curve of the ellipse is, the deeper the ellipse is going to be. So in other words, this ellipse here is going to be deeper than this ellipse here. You can see how it becomes more shallow. If it were level with our eye line, it would be perfectly straight. And then if it were below our eye line, it would start to curve the other way. Let me draw that for you. And then I'm going to explain to you how you find the eye line in a photograph. Let's draw our lighthouse. Now, many of them slope in like this. In other words, they're wider at the base than the top. But even if you're drawing something straight like a column, this effect will happen slightly anyway. This is due to three point perspective. Here's the top. Let's say we have another little bit on the top where the light is. What we're going to have here is an even deeper ellipse. And then if we have even stripes on our lighthouse, remembering to blend those stripes into the side, as they come down, they're going to become less steep. Where they meet our eye line, say we are here, they're going to be straight. And then as we look down below our eye line, the lighthouse is going to start having ellipses the other way, and they're going to become deeper as they go down. I've exaggerated that process a little bit, but you can see how it works. So how do you find where your eye line is in a photograph? Because actually it's taken from the point of view of the photographer. So it's not your eye line, it's the photographer's eye line. Where do you find out where the photographer's eye line was? One of the things you can do, first of all, is to find flat objects and see if you can see the top of them. Now look at this little tower here. We can see the top of this tower, means we must be above it. So we're actually up here somewhere on another slope and our eye line is above this. We can also possibly see just about inside some of the little boats on the horizon. Let's look at another one. This one also has a very high viewpoint. We can tell because we can see on top of the buildings and we can see on top of this jetty here. Now, when you're deciding what you can see on top of, don't take sloping roofs into account because they're tipping forward. So just because you can see on the top of a roof like this doesn't mean you're actually above it. You may well not be. What we're looking for is flat areas. So if we've got a roof like this, we want to actually take the roof off as it were. If I was sketching that little roof there, sides come up like this. So without the sloping part of the roof on, we've got something like this going on, which means I can see on top of that building slightly, which means our eye line is higher than this. We can also take these rings around this circular tower to show what we've been talking about. This one here is pretty straight, isn't it? These are all pretty straight. Once we get up a little bit higher, 
This one's slightly hexagonal, but it follows pretty much the same rules. It's starting to go a little bit the other way. So we see that our eye line here is high. I would say it's probably around here. Look at this picture of London. Look at how this curved dome, the ellipses go upwards here. So that tells us we're looking. If we were to draw this, we can see upwards. This is going upwards because it's above our eye line. This one's a little straighter. Then we would need to come down and see what we can see on top of. I'll move this up a bit so you can see there's a nice London bus here. This is a flat topped bus. We can't see inside it. So our eye line is low in this picture. We can see on the top of this tiny car. I would say our eye line is about here, which would make sense considering the size of the people in the picture. Now you don't want to obsess about this stuff, but it is worth remembering that the higher something is above your eye line, the deeper those ellipses are going to be. If we could see through this building, they will get narrower as they come down. Before we end this video, we're going to look at a couple of common mistakes that I see people making when drawing ellipses couple of real life examples and how you can adjust these and instinctively make them better because I don't want you to be sitting there, you know, with a ruler and lots of angst and worrying about these things and trying to make all these measurements and working out perspective. You don't need to do any of that. But there are a couple of occasions when I see people getting this wrong. I'm going to tell you how to instinctively make it look better. I've got a couple of mistakes here. I've drawn a couple of nice British tea mugs. And these are the two things that I see people do most commonly after the mistake whereby we put corners on ellipses. So we haven't done that. What we've got here is we've got a flat bottom. Now, I so often used to see this walking around my art classes, especially if we were drawing a vase on the table. Nice ellipse on the top, but then the bottom completely flat. What's happening here basically is your brain is messing with you. It's looking at this item on the table. And it's saying to you, well, that table's completely flat. Therefore, the base of this item must be flat. But we have learned that, especially with something that's on a table below our eye line, the base ellipse is actually deeper than the top ellipse. So it can be a quite a hard thing to get your head around when something's on a flat table. But it should actually look like this. So always remember, if you're looking down at something, base ellipse deeper than top ellipse. We've got a different problem with this one here. The base ellipse is fine, but the top ellipse is too deep. Now, when I showed you that little curtain weight and I tipped it towards my face, so I was looking at it face on, it was rounder. So if we draw something with an ellipse that's too deep, it's going to look like it's tipping up towards us. If I exaggerate that even more, you can see what happens. The top of this mug looks like it's tipping up to meet our eyes. If anything's ever tipping up, what you want to do is lessen the depth like so. Don't even need to measure it. Most of the time, this one simple adjustment will just make the object lay much flatter. So I want you to let me know in the comments how this video has helped you. If there's anything else that you would like me to cover related to drawing on this channel. Now, lots of things in the world are circular. Lots of things are also square. This is something I've covered before. But if you'd like another more focused perspective video all about how to draw square objects, do let me know in the comments. And before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got all sorts of free stuff down there for you, including some free downloadable PDFs, one of which is all about drawing tips. I'm going to link to one of my most popular drawing tips videos at the end of this one. So if you've ever thought that you can't really improve your drawing, it's really difficult and really complicated. That's going to level up your skills incredibly fast. I also have a full comprehensive longer drawing course on my courses website. I'll leave all of the details in the video description. You can watch that other drawing tips video right now.